Hello, hello. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, hello. Say hello, everybody. This is Father Adam. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining me today. This uh, reflection will be in English. Uh, and I'm seeing all of your comments. Uh, I am um, not able to uh, transmit the Mass until probably next month uh, when I will be in my new parish, new Polish National Catholic uh, Church parish in Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas! Hello, hello! But until then, I will be uh, coming to you in these formats, providing you with some good news that I know you can use. And so thank you for joining me right now. I have a great reflection on the readings for today and this Sunday, August 8th. I have been uh, traveling uh, because I was incarnated, uh, which is just a church word. You know, it's church lingo. That means uh, I was made part of the Polish National Catholic Church, which is a valid, legitimate, and licit Catholic Church uh, with valid sacraments. Mm. All of the sacraments are valid in the Polish National Catholic Church. It is a valid uh, Catholic tradition. And it fits me very well because I'm Polish, but you don't have to be Polish in order to go to a Polish National Catholic Church, just like you don't have to be Roman to go to a Roman Catholic Church. Uh, and so I am uh, starting a Polish National Catholic parish in Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas! Uh, I'm absolutely excited about that. Um, and uh, I will have the building where I will be starting next month um, because they have tenants at this point uh, until the 31st of August. And so um, next month is when I will begin. And so then I will be able to transmit live from Las Vegas. <laughs> Can you imagine how that's going to sound live from Las Vegas? This is Father Adam. <laughs> For all of you with some good news that I know you can use. Hello, hello. So I'm super excited and uh, full of joy because this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Look who's behind me right here. This is my grandmother. And right here I have my mom on this side. Okay, you see her? Her picture is a little smaller. <laughs> and there's St. Jude. Uh, and that's... Grandma's picture is way bigger. <laughs> Don't tell that to my mom. <laughs> but it's so good to be coming to all of you. Let's reflect on the uh, first reading for uh, this weekend. A reading from the Book of Kings. Go ahead and comment, of course, and let me know that uh, you're able to hear me. And um, the, the reason why I'm coming live to you is so that we can kind of interact because I'm here by myself right now. So I need you to be commenting, okay? If something hits you, go ahead and comment and say, Father, I just love it. A reading from the first Book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again 
but the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him and ordered him, get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate and drank. Then strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello, hello. Elijah is really the patron saint of depression. If you feel depressed, and we all do from one time to another in our life, the prophet Elijah's intercession is the most powerful. Elijah here in this first reading finds himself after having killed more than 400 prophets of the uh, pagan god Baal, B-A-A-L. If you read the Bible, you it's a very familiar word. And so he's at the top of his game. And now he finds himself with Jezebel, the queen who worshipped Baal, after him, trying to kill him for his faithfulness to the God of Israel and for Elijah's refusal to worship pagan gods. So one day he is on top of the world and the next day he is experiencing what we just read about. He's in the gutter. He's all down. He's depressed. He's feeling all sorry for himself. And he wants to die, as the Bible says right here. This is enough, Elijah says. Take my life. Hmm? You know that feeling? How many people have been trying to kill themselves? Suicide rates have never been higher than they are right now and that we have experienced last year during the pandemic. I hear this all the time. Father Adam, I don't want to live anymore. I've had enough. Hmm? He's down and depressed and feeling sorry for himself. This is a classic situation from our own lives when we just wish we were dead, being overwhelmed by our problems and our life situation. You know what that's like. Mm? Right now, I am in very close contact with JJ, who is 21 years old. I posted his picture on Facebook. He has had his arm cut off because he has bone cancer. And the cancer is back. And right now he is at UCLA in Los Angeles. He's from Las Vegas. That's how I know him and his family. And uh, the cancer is back. And I'm, I'm talking to him on a daily basis. He has lost 15 pounds. He says he weighs now like 119 pounds. And he's 5'10", so can you imagine? So keep him in your prayers. And not just JJ, but I talk to people who are down all the time and who say, I can't take this anymore. I don't want to keep fighting. I don't want to keep struggling. This is Elijah. It's a classic situation from our own lives when we, ju we just wish we were dead because we feel overwhelmed by our problems and our life situation. We say, look at me, how fat I am, how ugly I am. Nobody loves me. Nobody wants me. I just want to die. Look at my life. I have all these addictions. I can't overcome them. I keep going back and falling down. I just can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore with my alcoholic husband or my cheating husband or my husband who doesn't change, who insults me, who doesn't want to spend time with me. I wish I was dead. 
I look at my problems with my children, my work situation, my health situation, the whole virus situation. I see my bills. I see the rising gas prices, the rising food prices. I can't take this anymore. I've had enough. I just talked this week with a uh, lady here from Las Vegas whose daughter has a terrible eating disorder. She almost died. And I know something about eating disorders because I suffer from an eating disorder myself. You, you don't think she's had enough? And this is Elijah. He says, I just want it to be over. When we think about our errors and our mistakes and our sins, people say to me all the time, Father, I'm so awful terrible. I can't. I can't do this anymore. And what does God do to Elijah? God sends Elijah and he is sending you right now. An angel. Huh? God sends an angel to Elijah to give him a what? It says it right here. Huh? He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree, but then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. I read the original Hebrew. This thing of touched him really means he kicked him. The angel kicked him and ordered him to get up and eat. In other words, God sends an angel to give Elijah a kick in the ass. An ass is a biblical word. Look it up. Before all the holy rollers, you know, start saying, oh, look what he said. Look what he said. I'm sick and tired of all that. You say worse things. Elijah gets a kick in the behind <clears throat> from the angel. And I hope I'm, I'm going to give you a kick in your behind as well right now. The Lord is sending you an angel through me. Hmm? Take it in. to a person who is suicidal and feels like a complete zero. Not only does he want to die, but he has a death sentence over him because Jezebel wants him dead. And the angel of the Lord comes to Elijah and says what? Get up, you fool. Stop being feeling sorry for yourself, Elijah. Eat and drink. For the journey is long and arduous. In other words, walk and live. Don't just exist, Elijah. Stop just existing. Live. Do it. Because God is with you always, Elijah. What is wrong with you, Elijah? And the same thing I want to say to you right now. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Stop it. You know, this Bible passage is engraved in my, in my brain all the time because I'm, I have an eating disorder. I used to weigh 325 pounds. In fact, I have a picture on, on my refrigerator. Wait, okay. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Okay, <laughs> okay, here, all right? That's me and my grandmother. I have pictures of my grandma everywhere, okay? There's one right here. Okay? So I used to weigh 325 pounds at the highest. And that has damaged me a lot. You know, people used to call me all sorts of stuff. So I feel very ugly inside. I, I don't look at the mirror. I can't. It's impossible for me to look in the mirror. I feel fat. My, my brain has been damaged. You understand that? You know, through, it's, it's how I developed this eating disorder. And so, you know, I could, I, I got down to something like 120 pounds and I, people saw pictures, there was pictures of me where I was just skin and bones and I really almost died because I couldn't eat until I got help. To this day, I go to a, support group, a 12-step group, and I, I thank God I have help for that. It's been a saving grace in my life. But this eating disorder, Ed, as I call him, ED, 
you know, it's an uh, uh, abbreviation of eating disorder, continues to bombard me with these thoughts. Mm? And so this Bible passage is engraved in me, and I, I have to read it all the time to get a kick in my ass when I don't want to eat. Because I feel like if I'm going to eat, I'm going to gain weight. So I need that. I, I, and, 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 and it comes to me all the time. What the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, he says to me, and he wants to say to you, get up, you fool. Stop being stupid. I hear that all the time. Stop being stupid, Adam. What's wrong with you? Eat and drink. You have to eat and drink for the journey is long and arduous. I have this Bible passage, passage embedded in my mind because as many of you know, I've been diagnosed with this eating disorder and I have such a hard time eating and I need a kick in my ass from the angel of the Lord to eat and live. Mm. You know, a car doesn't run without gas and your body won't run without food. Eat and drink. Notice the angel doesn't say, oh, Elijah, it's going to be okay. Don't worry, be happy. No. All gentle and tender. No. Mm. The angel isn't all gentle and tender, huh? The angel gives Elijah a kick in the ass to wake him up, to come to his senses. What's, what's wrong with you, Elijah? And I'm asking you the same question this morning because I ask myself that same question every time I don't want to eat. And, you know, like I, I go and I exercise and I have to stop at some point because, I, because of this eating disorder. You know, I could spend all day in the gym exercising away, you know, because uh, I think that it's never enough. Okay, so I have to give myself a kick and I need this kick. Huh? What's wrong with you, Elijah? Eat and drink. The journey is long. 40 days and 40 nights. Did you notice it says right here? Uh, get up and eat. Else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate and drank. Then strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights. The 40 days and 40 nights in the Bible, the number 40 is a number of transformation. You remember the flood of Noah? where the whole world was transformed or the 40 days that the people of Israel walked in the desert, they became new, transformed, changed. And Jesus, 40 days in the desert, it's a time of transformation. So get up and walk. Hmm? We all need that kick in the behind as I need it all the time when I don't want to eat because Ed comes to bombard me with thoughts that I will get fat and ugly. And when I look in the mirror and see all the roles I have, that's why I can't look in the mirror. I need that kick. And so do you right now. So God is sending you an angel, Father Adam, to give you a kick in the ass. Wake up. Stop it. What's wrong with you? Life is meant to be lived and lived joyfully. My grandmother, look at her right here, okay? She gets up every single day and she says, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Huh? This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Live it. Don't just exist in it. This is precisely what I just did hmm, when I joined the Polish National Catholic Church. Rather than allow myself to continue to be abused by the institutional Roman Church, I got up and left. You know, there's other ways to be Catholic than just Roman and valid. You know, I mean, I wanted to be in a, in a Catholic Church that is recognized as valid. Um, and you can look up the validity of the Polish National Catholic Church and its orders and its priests. It's all there in the Internet. 
Um, even on the United States Conference of Roman Catholic Bishops, there are documents there. All you have to do is um, um, put in the search there, Polish National Catholic Church, and it will give you uh, statements from the Vatican, one of them by Cardinal Edward Idris Cassidy from 1995 that speaks about the validity and the legitimacy of the Polish National Catholic Church. So I did not change religions, as people will be probably saying. You know, I'm Catholic 1,000% and always will be. <laughs> but rather than allow myself to continue to be abused by the institutional Roman Church, I got up and left. And, you know, I had um, breakfast with my friend Julie. And my friend Julie Minelli, she's absolutely wonderful. She put it best. When I said to her, Julie, I don't have any power. I'm just a simple parish priest. And they have millions of dollars and big shot lawyers behind them and titles and an entire huge institution. And she looks at me, Julie does, and says, you do have power. You got up and left. That's more powerful than any millions of dollars or lawyers or titles or anything else. To get up, Julie says, and walk away. Mm, it hit me. Not allowing myself to be abused any longer. Huh? Rather than feeling sorry for myself to have to put up with the BS of an institution that could care less about me huh? and could in many ways care less about people's needs, spiritual needs, and that continues in so many ways to abuse people, I got up and walked away. It, there isn't just the abuse that you read about on the internet, but there is also spiritual abuse hmm? that ha is per perpet perpetrated by religious people. Don't allow yourself to be abused spiritually by religious people as I got up and left. Huh? And maybe that's what you need to do. Hmm? Walk away from that abusive relationship. I said, I I've had enough. Huh? Enough is enough. Uh, walk away from that abusive marriage. You have no obligation to allow yourself to be abused by another person or an institution. No. Walk away from that job that abuses you or friendship. Get up and walk away. Sayonara, mm? as Father Adam did. Bye, y'all. Mm? Adios. Bye-bye. Auf Wiedersehen. Goodbye. Do widzenia. That's Polish. <laughs> and that's power. Huh? To get up and walk. That's what the angel says. In other words, giving your enemies the small finger. <laughs> Give him the small finger and walk away. The angel is saying, it's not that bad. Huh? It's not as bad as you think it is, says the angel. The Lord is with you. That's what I want you to hear right now. God is with you in whatever situation you may be facing, in whatever depressive situation you may be in. You have access to the greatest power out there, the power that moves the universe, the grace above all grace. The grace that says all will be well. Walk those 40 days and 40 nights. huh? Stop living as if you didn't have this power in you. The force is with you. Hello. Hello. The force is with you. That's why I always use the bell. Because I want you to wake up. God is with you. What does the angel say to Elijah? under that tree. Eat that bread. Hmm? What bread? The bread we eat at Holy Mass. Huh? Jesus himself. Eat Holy Communion. 
Uh, that's where the gospel comes in for this particular Sunday, where Jesus says, I am the bread of life. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? In other words, they said, how could this be? He's a nobody. He's this person from Galilee. Nothing good comes from Galilee, huh? You know, they all talk about you, don't they? You've got people like that, you know, the naysayers, the ones who want to bring you down. Look at my life. All the people who want to bring me down. But no. Okay? Get up and walk and live. Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I've come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring amongst yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. And then Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Oh my God in heaven, it's hitting me right now. Mm. I am the bread of life. Take that in today. Mm. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. You get it? Eat the bread and you will not die. I am the living bread, not the dead bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread, oh my God. Oh, it's hitting me. Whoever eats this bread mm, will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. You understand? Eat the bread. And when we eat the bread that is Jesus, we become Jesus. We turn into him. He's got no other body but yours. You are his body. When we eat Jesus, St. Augustine says, we eat to become what we receive. Hmm? So, when we eat Holy Communion, we turn into Holy Communion. So it's, it's not no longer you that lives, but Jesus who lives in you. And then it says, drink the water. Which water? The holy and exercised water. That's why I promote holy and exercised water. Nasdrovya. This is holy and exercised water. Mm? To be able to resist all the attacks of the devil, not just the eating disorder that I suffer from, but also from the attacks of the devils that are all around me, my enemies. And you've got them too. Mm? Cheers to them all. <sighs> mm? And refresh yourself. Take in that power. Drink the holy and exercised water that Father Adam prepares and stop overblowing things. Stop exaggerating. It's not like you think it is. It's not as tragic as your mind makes it out to be. God is with you. You get it? Hello, hello. And if God is with you, who can be against you? Look at Romans chapter 8. You and Jesus will make it through this thing and everything in this life. Huh? Alone you won't. But together with Jesus, you will make it through it all. You and Jesus. That's why you eat the bread, the bread that is Jesus. You take him in and together with him, you make it. Alone you can't, but you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. For it is no longer you who live, but Christ who lives in you. And then Elijah goes to Mount Horeb where he meets God. The 40 days of transformation and change. You go through the tough experiences and they change you, transform you. And there, after you meet God, you listen to the angel. Hmm? You receive that kick. Huh? So I hope that you have received a little bit of a kick today 
Thank you so much for being here uh, with me. Go ahead and comment uh, because my reflection that I've prepared has, uh, I, I finished. And I'm so very happy to be greeting all of you. Mwah. Hello, hello. Go ahead and share this right now. Share it, share it, share it. Make sure you're sharing everything. Uh, and it's so wonderful to be, uh, go ahead and tell me if, if things hit you today. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, if any of you need that holy water, that holy blessed and exercised water, um, my friend Julissa has it in Las Vegas and we will have it in my parish as well. And we will be able to, uh, ship it to everybody. Um, uh, but right now, if you need it, um, please, uh, uh, go ahead and contact Julissa and Eric. Their phone number is 702-689-8871 or 702-684-9770. Okay. And they can uh, give it to, uh, uh, all of you. So go ahead and contact them. And they've got other things as well. Oh, so wonderful to see all of you, Debbie and Leonardo. I'm seeing everybody here. Thank you so much. Say hello. Uh, and uh, let me know if, if something helped you today from these particular readings. God is with you. Everything is going to be just fine in your life. We're going to get through it all. Huh? They really hit me. I have the St. Joseph sleeping, uh, Maria says. Yes, the sleeping statue of St. Joseph. Uh, uh, Julissa has them as well, in, uh, and she is able to ship them to you. So call her again, 702-689-8871 or 702-684-9770, and they speak great English. <laughs> um, the sleeping statue of St. Joseph, absolutely fabulous uh, for us to put our petitions under, um, the sleeping, uh, St. Joseph, uh, absolutely, uh, fantastic. And the ex special exercised holy water to battle with the devil. I, I have to drink the exercised holy water every day because as I told you, I suffer from an eating disorder. Look, this is what I used to look like. And a lot of people say to me, father, you know, how did you lose weight? Well, I had to deal with my stuff first. I mean, I went through so many diets, like the cabbage soup diet. And also, I don't recommend it, by the way, even though I sleep by myself, you know, still, you know, you don't want to eat cabbage. <laughs> Lots of farting are going around. <laughs> but um, you have to deal with the underlying causes. Otherwise, you're going to be yo-yoing in your life. Okay, so I had to deal, you know, with a lot of stuff in my life. That's why uh, I'm part of a 12-step program right now, and I go to meetings, uh, and I've got help for my stuff. And that's how you have to do it as well, okay? Because it's not good for you to be overweight, obviously, or not good to be underweight either, okay? Um, so uh, um, absolutely fantastic. Uh, and, and necessary uh, for us um, uh, uh, to deal with our issues. Only when I dealt with my issues, you know, like the fact that I was abandoned by my mom when I was a child in Poland that left marks, you know, when she came here to the United States. Um, then I had to leave my grandmother. I had to leave Poland. I became an immigrant, lived the immigrant experience, had to learn another way of living, another language. I was bullied in school. I talk about all of these things. You know, my parents' divorce. All of those things damaged me, you know, then the whole seminary experience and the things that happened to me there. I always talk about all of those things. And only when I dealt with those things was I able to deal with my weight. 
Otherwise, the weight just kept going up and up. I mean, I'd lose some weight sometime, but then, you know, because I didn't deal with the underlying issues. So you have to deal with your underlying issues. And only then will you be able to deal with the, you know, outward issues that, that show themselves. Okay, and I call on all, all of you to do that. So there isn't like a magic diet because people want me to give them, well, what did you do? You know, how, what, what kind of diet did you follow? Was it the keto? Was it um, cabbage soup diet? Was it uh, Weight Watchers or was, I mean, no diet is going to work. Okay, unless you deal with what's in here. You get it? You got to deal with the psychological and emotional issues that have led to you weighing 300 pounds, okay? You have to do that. Otherwise, it ain't gonna work. I know it. I weighed 325 pounds for a very, very long time and I would lose some weight and then come back up. Hmm? People want to see my photo again. Okay, well, there, this is just one. I have lots of other ones. Okay, that's my grandmother. Okay, there you go. See, I mean, I have lots of other pictures. I, I don't like looking at them. I keep that one because wherever, whenever my grandmother is on a picture, I look at my grandma. Okay, because, you know, did you see this one? You like this one right here? Okay. Yeah, this is a good one. Um. Uh, let's see if I can read that. Okay. But there. This is when I visited Poland for my grandmother's 80th birthday. Okay? And she'd say to me, she says, I was weighing not a lot back then. And she said to me, you know, you look like a survivor from Auschwitz. Because, <laughs> you know, she lived during the time when, uh, and she remembers people leaving Auschwitz, the concentration camp. And, um, and that's when I started realizing and she pleaded with me. She said, please get help. And I did, you know, because she loves me and because I love you. I'm pleading with you right now as well. You know, get help for your issues. If you're an alcoholic, you need to go to a 12-step program. If you are overweight and are dealing with weight, there's Overeaters Anonymous 12-step program. Get counseling. Most insurance programs have mental health as part of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're in an abusive situation, do not remain in your abusive situation. You. That's why I... You know, that kick in the ass from the angel today is not just for me, but it's for all of you, you know. And I talk this way to you because I love you and I open myself up to you. Do you think it's easy for me to talk about the fact that I have an eating disorder? Do you think it's easy to talk about my own issues? No. It's very difficult. And I get attacked because I talk about my issues. But I do it because I want you to get help. Because I love you. And I know you suffer, many of you. And it pains me. So because I love you, I want you to get help for your stuff. Oh, uh, your words matter, Alberto says. Thank you so much. See, I'm reading all of your comments. How come you're all not commenting? Susan, I know Susan Clinton. Yeah, I know all of you all. All you all. <laughs> yeah, thank you for being here uh, this morning with me. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, oh, somebody from San Luis Potosi. I've been there. I've been to many places. There is Lillian... I know Lillian Tatar very well. Hi, Lily. Everybody say hello, okay? Hello, hello. So now next month, when I have my parish, Divine Mercy Catholic Church, Polish National Catholic Church in Las Vegas, uh, I hope many of you will plan a visit 
to Las Vegas. No, you cannot stay with me. <laughs> I have only a very small apartment, um, but there's plenty of places to stay. I could always give you recommendations, okay? Um, lots of great recommendations to stay. It's very cheap to stay in different hotels in Las Vegas. Uh, and then you can plan a visit to uh, visit me uh, in my parish in, uh, in Las Vegas. So you could get a big hello, hello from me and get all your packets and everything. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, it'll be absolutely fantastic. So as I said, it'll be opening next month. Um, and don't allow anybody to tell you, you know, like it's n not a valid Catholic church or something like that because it absolutely is. Um, and, uh, oh, there is Margaret Hadley. I remember Margaret from, uh, yes, from CTK. I used to, she, oh my gosh. Uh, and I, I, hi, Margaret. Oh my goodness. Margaret, uh, uh, is a f absolutely fantastic person. Uh, great, great person. I just love Margaret. I'm happy to see Margaret here, uh, joining us. Um, and, and, and all of you, uh, and if, oh, Angie says we live in Las Vegas. Oh, absolutely. Angie, that's fantastic. And, you know, don't allow people to tell you that, you know, Father Adam has like changed religions or something. Like I told you, you know, do your own, um, do your own research. There is Corinne de la Mort Bing. Hello there, Corinne. Hello, hello. Long time no see. <laughs> okay. Uh, even if you open a, the missalette, like I have a missalette here, the breaking bread with daily mass propers. This is a Roman Catholic uh, missalette. And if you open it to page 233 in this one, okay. Let's see, where is page 233? Okay. If you open it to page... 233, okay, it says guidelines for the reception of communion. And right there, it says, because Catholics believe that the celebration of the Eucharist is a sign of the reality of the oneness of faith, life, and worship, members of those churches with whom we are not yet fully united, are ordinarily not admitted to Holy Communion. Eucharistic sharing in exceptional circumstances by other Christians requires permission according to the directives of the diocesan bishop and the provisions of canon law. It's all just, you know, institutional speak. Okay, members of the Orthodox churches the Assyrian Church of the East, and listen to this, and the Polish National Catholic Church are urged to respect the discipline of their own churches. According to Roman Catholic discipline, the Code of Canon Law does not object to the reception of communion by Christians of these churches. According to Roman Catholic discipline, the Code of Canon Law does not object to the reception of communion by Christians of these churches. There you go, right here. And it's present in every single missalette in a Roman Catholic church. So do not allow people to tell you that you cannot receive communion in a Polish National Catholic Church. Because if Polish National Catholics can receive communion in Roman Catholic churches, that means the Polish National Catholic Church is a valid Catholic church. And there's like a, uh, I mean, and you can read again on the United States Conference of Roman Catholic Bishops website, uh, the joint statement on unity between the two churches. So there is just not a Roman Catholic way of being Catholic. And people will try to say that, okay? I am not a Roman Catholic priest anymore. I was incarnated into the Polish National Catholic Church. And I'm very proud of that. I'm very, very proud to be Polish National Catholic, a valid Catholic priest. I have not changed religions. I am still 1,000% Catholic. 
but there's not just one way of being Catholic. So don't allow somebody to tell you, you know, Father Adam changed religions. He's not a valid Catholic priest anymore. And people will be saying that, of course, because, you know, there's a lot of sectarians and naysayers and others. Don't listen to that, okay? You need to do your own research and inform yourself, okay, about that. Um, and so when you visit uh, the Polish National Catholic Church in Las Vegas, Divine Mercy Church that I am opening, you'll be able to receive communion. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And yes, you can receive valid sacraments, marriage and confirmation and uh, confession and, and anointing of the sick. All the sacraments are valid. And there, Corinne gave, gave you the uh, link right there. Thank you, Corinne, for posting that. We have to inform ourselves because, you know, there will be a lot of institutional people who will be saying um, things. And uh, I have to uh, make sure that you have the right information from me, okay? Because you know that I love you and I want you to know the truth because the truth sets us free. Mm -hmm. So it's a, 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 a extremely, extremely important for me to be able to inform all of you about that. Oh, there's somebody from Sacramento, California, and right now being in uh, um, right now being in Las Vegas, this will be fabulous because it will allow so many people to uh, uh, um, to visit me. Margaret says. You are a valid messenger of Jesus. Thank you. And that is the most important thing. Exactly. Exactly, Margaret. You are absolutely right. You know, to be a valid messenger of Jesus. Uh, so, yes, I'm uh, coming back to Las Vegas. Hello, hello. So thank you so very much. And I'm, I'm absolutely uh, overjoyed that so many of you are here uh, uh, with me today. Alberto says, don't listen to the haters. Little finger and follow what the nice words says. Exactly. Thank you. That's the way we have to be. Uh -huh. uh, Francis says, are you now in Las Vegas? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I am. Viva Las Vegas. <gasps> But I'm working on opening um, the church because the building that I'm uh, starting the parish at, Divine Mercy Church Las Vegas, and I'm working on getting the website running as well and the Facebook page, um, it's not available until the end of the month, okay? And I have a whole uh, church building that I moved from uh, New Jersey a, a Catholic church that closed in New Jersey and we brought the entire contents, the altars, the stations of the cross, everything, the baptismal font. We brought it all to Las Vegas and all we have to do, it's in storage right now. All we have to do is put it in the building that we have at the end of the month and uh, start up and running. So it'll be fantastic. Um, uh, thank you so much. And uh, it was an experience. I will have to post a lot of things uh, on, um, on, on Facebook about that. Um, uh, I'm working on visiting Juanito. Yes, Maria is asking me. Uh, he's in UCLA. He's in uh, Los Angeles right now, the young man. Um, so... Uh, uh, he's getting treatments at this time. And so um, one of the things I want to do, even if I have to, I will drive to Los Angeles and I will see him because I promised him that. Because um, JJ, he goes by, he says, I really want to see you. So I promised him that, you know, um, I will uh, I will do that. Kathleen is asking, are you going to broadcast mass from the new church? Yes, but that requires money. Okay, so, you know, it ain't free. <laughs> so you all are going to have to cooperate if you're going to want uh, masses to be broadcast and everything. We're going to put some donate buttons and things 
because um, I don't have the equipment anymore because the equipment that I had belonged to the church in Clear Lake. So, you know, um, I had to leave it there. So now I will have to purchase new equipment. And that's like, you know, it costs like $20,000. So I don't have the money. Uh, that's why I'm just using my phone right now. And you can't broadcast masses and uh, Bible studies and things, you know, effectively with just a phone. And so um, everybody's going to have to cooperate and help me later on. Um, and I will make sure that I will solicit that. <laughs> so don't worry. <laughs> so um, absolutely, I want to make sure that you all uh, are able to see everything that I produce. Um, so uh, fantastic. Uh, so we have a whole church from New Jersey that closed and we brought it here to Las Vegas, everything. Uh, and it's all in storage. And uh, next month, um, we will be opening. Do you like the name Divine Mercy Church? Uh, somebody says, sell your tamales. Absolutely. Blessed tamales. I'm, believe me, I'll be selling everything. <laughs> somebody said to me, they said, Father Adam, which statues are the most powerful? Uh, are they... Um, the statue of St. Jude or of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which ones should I have? I said, that's an irrelevant question. Don't ask me which statues, you know, you should have. You should have them all and you should buy them all from me <laughs> so that I can uh, help support the church. And so believe me, I will be, uh, I'll be selling away and uh, soliciting um, donations from all of you. We have a... Uh, Nonprofit status, of course, and so any donations that you will give will be tax deductible. Uh, so be uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, and the church is going to be in the Meadows Mall area, uh, right off of the 95 and Valley View exit in Las Vegas. So um, it's uh, uh, very conveniently located for everybody. Um, so be and we'll be, of course, I'm going to be doing my Bible studies and classes and everything else. So um, uh, it'll be absolutely fabulous. Um, can't wait to uh, um, can't wait to share smiles with all of you in my new Polish Catholic uh, parish in uh, um, in Las Vegas. No, absolutely. My uh, Salazar asks, so your bishop is not the same from the Roman Catholic here in Las Vegas? Yes, I have a different bishop. I am not under the Roman Catholic Diocese of Las Vegas. That has to be very clear, okay? I am not Roman Catholic under the Roman Catholic Bishop of Las Vegas. I am Polish National Catholic, Okay, I don't want there to be any confusion uh, in people because pe they're going to be claiming, they're going to be saying, you know, oh, Father Adam is trying to steal people. I don't have to steal people. They will steal themselves. <laughs> you know, get busy taking care of your people and stop worrying about who's stealing people and not. You know, they'll be worrying about um, people going to a Polish National Catholic Church. Um, they should be more worrying about people leaving faith altogether and not going to church or going to evangelical churches where there are no valid sacraments, huh? where there is no holy communion, where there is no confession, no absolution, no sacrament of marriage and confirmation. So I have to be very, very clear about that. Um, what's the difference? Well, um, the difference is that uh, uh, I have my own bishop in Buffalo, Pittsburgh, and uh, I'm under him, and so he is my boss. My boss is not the Roman Catholic bishop of um, Las Vegas. I'm not part of the diocese, the Roman Catholic diocese of Las Vegas. I want that to be extremely clear. However, I am a valid Catholic priest, um, recognized as such. You can 
go online, um, recognized as valid, that I am a valid Catholic priest and my validity is uh, recognized by the Vatican. So that is very important. There are other ways to be Catholic besides Roman Catholic. And you don't have to be Polish to go to a Polish National Catholic Church. Um, uh, as you don't have to be Roman to go to a Roman Catholic Church. Um, what is the difference? Well, the Polish uh, National Catholic Church, you can Google all of this stuff. You know, I don't want to spend a, a lot of time talking about it, but um, the, because all of that, I have to preach the gospel, not, uh, you know, that's my main mission. <laughs> but the Polish National Catholic Church was founded at a time uh, organized here. Uh, no, it is not Anglican. It is not similar to Anglican. It is Catholic, 1,000% Catholic, not Anglican, not Episcopal. I am Catholic, okay? Uh, uh, recognized as validly Catholic, 1,000% recognized as such. There, am I back because it was, okay, tell me if you can hear me, okay? Recognized as such, um, the Polish uh, National Catholic Church is part of the one holy Catholic Church. God bless you, Father Adam. Yes, absolutely. So it was organized for hurting people because the needs of the Polish immigrants in the United States was not being met or validated by the Roman Church uh, in the late 1800s, okay? And so Father Hodur organized a church uh, for the people to respond to their needs. And that's exactly what I am doing. And he made sure that he was validly, legitimately Catholic, 1,000%, as when I was looking to uh, continue my ministry, I was looking to make sure that I was 1,000% valid because I'm, I didn't change religions, okay? We were one of the biggest supporters of you. Now you're back under the, uh, let me see here, the Polish Catholic Church. You have our support, Father Adam. Questions. Is this the first Polish Catholic Church in Las Vegas. Absolutely. The first Polish National Catholic Church in Las Vegas. And uh, people say, okay, fantastic. See, I'm trying to answer all of your questions, but a lot of these things you're going to have to look up on your own um, and do your own research. Don't allow people to tell you things. Okay. Um, I hope that um, I'm answering everybody's questions and I always want to be very clear and transparent. You know me. You know, the best thing is always transparency. You know, that's why I mean I'm letting everybody know everything. Uh, absolutely fantastic. So the Polish National Catholic Church was organized as a church for hurting people. And that's my mission is to, you know how I preach. I address people's hurts. I address people's wounds. And that's what I always do. And that's what I will continue to do. Now, I had to do this because um, there was no other way for me to come back to Las Vegas, okay? And you know how it is. I don't wanna get into too many things because you, you, know, you don't need to know. It's, it doesn't help anything, you know? We don't wanna rehash old things. Um, and so, um, because I want to be a priest. I had no choice. Yeah. You know, if I wanted to remain as a valid Catholic priest and continue my ministry, I had to do this. And what better place than Las Vegas that I have a lot of support because I need support. I'm a human being, right? You know, and you know that. And so I know a lot of people in Las Vegas that are very supportive of me and that are helping me. And I'm very blessed. 
and I need that. And so I hope that many of you will also help me and support me in my ministry. Um, so thank you so much. I'm trying to uh, interact with so many of you. Go ahead and make comments so that I can uh, um, interact with you. Yeah, somebody said here, the Polish is separate from the Roman Catholic Church. It is, it is separate. I just said it, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I, that, that's uh, the Polish National Catholic Church is not Roman Catholic. I just said it. What more do you want? You know, but it is a valid Catholic Church recognized as such by the Vatican as being valid. So, you know, that is the truth. What more do you want? It's not under the Roman Catholic Diocese of Las Vegas. That is the parish that I'm starting. So, you know, I mean, what else do you all want me to say? I mean, you know, I think I need, I, this will be probably the last time I'm going to be speaking about this because I'm sick and tired of it. Okay. From Sacramento, whatever father you are, and we'll always follow you because you are the father we need. Ah, thank you. Oh, fantastic. You know. Absolute. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that so many are, of you are so very supportive of me. Absolutely. So wonderful uh, to see so many of you here with me today. I want to give you a big blessing. Thank you, Corinne. You always say the truth. One holy Catholic and apostolic. Perfect. Thank you so much. Catholic means universal. Absolutely. Ah, there you go. Juanita says. Oh, Mia says, thank you so much. Yes, the Polish, uh, the Polish National Catholic Church has lots of ministry in Spanish because um, many of its parishes, and they have lots of priests who are from Mexico. Um, so uh, Mass is in the language of the people. So I will be having Mass in English and in Spanish, of course, um, because, you know... Um, uh, because that's um, uh, what the need of the people is. And so that's how um, uh, the, the Polish National Catholic Church does it. Okay. Um, thank you, Denise. Follow your heart. Oh, fabulous. I miss you, Denise. You know that, right? And I pray for you every day. Yeah, say hello, everybody, because I'm here. I have some time, so, you know. Absolutely. Fantastic to be with all of you. Say hi. And I hope you visit me in Las Vegas once I'm up and running. Rosa Virgen. I know Rosa a lot. She's from Sacramento. Hi, Rosa. Say hello. Thank you for your support. Yeah, go ahead and comment. I will be transmitting in Spanish in just a little bit as well. So, fantastic. Good to see all of you here. Yes, there will be one in Spanish in just a little bit. So, God bless you all. May God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.